Hello and welcome back to Cooking with Sarah. I'm sorry I have been a little flaky about getting the Sunday video out. Unfortunately, right now it is mayhem season at my day job. I have been working eight, eight, eight days a week. <laughs> if there were eight days in the week, I'd probably be working them. Working pretty much seven days a week until eight, nine, ten, eleven o'clock at night. So, um, Fortunately, I have a large stockpile of Minecraft videos to get me through this. Um, fortunately, it doesn't mean I have a whole lot of time to play stuff fresh. Anyway, today we are going to look at a mod pack and map that has kind of been an obsession for me lately. As you can tell, we are on a little sky island here. That's right, this is Agrarian Skies. It's on the FTB launcher. And let me get back in here. It is a skyblock map, sort of, with a twist. And this is the Home Sweet Home map. I will show you the flat platform map shortly. This is not, as you, if you've been following the series, you'll probably know, this is not my normal Let's Play world. This is uh, the one that I've been playing when I've not been wanting to get too far ahead in the Let's Play world anyway. One of the early concerns is going to be your hunger. And as you can see here, I'm kind of hurting. Now the good news is, you have this, this uh, quest book. And as you progress, you get various rewards. You might get um, food, you might get implements, whatever. Early on, uh, if you are offered a reward bag, and it's not a choice, and there's something else useful that you can actually see, take the item that you can see. Um, sometimes the reward bags are great. Sometimes you get stuff like this. What am I even supposed to do with a boat with feather falling on it? What am I even supposed to do with a boat up here to, anyway? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, there are a couple of things to watch out for. Let's see, I think it's the, yeah, the Smoothest Silk Quest. This is where you learn how to make string. <laughs> and where you also get stones. But uh, you'll see some seeds that you're offered here. Don't take the carrot seeds, because you can't plant them until you can make a mattock, and you can't make a mattock until you have a smeltery. And that's way down the road. You might do okay taking the seed seeds, but... Once you get grass seeds, you'll be able to get those pretty easily. No, you want to take the sugarcane seeds first. Trust me on this. In my regular Let's Play world, I did not take the sugarcane seeds. You don't even want to know how much dirt I had to sift to get them. These reward bags, like I said, they can either be great or horrible. These hearts that you can get... Oh, hey, there we go. Be very careful because every once in a while you will get a rotten one. A rotten heart will take one of your lives away. Oh yes, did I mention that? You have a limited number of lives in this pack. Anyway, um, my hunger is decreasing and I'm sitting here flapping my jaw. So, your first food source in Agrarian Skies is going to be apples. You are going to eat so many apples in the early game. You are going to be an apple vor. Now you notice I am beating these leaves with a little shepherd's crook thing. Do not break leaves without a crook. They're very cheap to make. It's four sticks. And later on, you can use four bones. The durability is kind of crappy. Oh, okay, you see what just fell out of that tree is a silkworm. You'll need that to get string. But if you have a furnace or a pan, and you can actually get a pan as a reward in one of these quests, and that's actually probably what I should have taken, because I didn't, you can cook your extra silkworms up and you can eat them. That is your second food source early on. And they're not very filling. Uh, other appetizing things you can eat once you get the mariculture sifter. If you want to throw some dirt at it, it will give you things like ants and maggots and grasshoppers and who even knows what else. Yum, yum. Yeah, those are also edible. And they will also make you kind of sick, as the, as bugs do. So I'm going to go ahead and just get the rest of this tree. And there we go. Now, how do you get stuff like cobblestone and iron and all the things that you're accustomed to just finding in the ground in normal Minecraft? Okay. 
Well, first of all, you have to compost your extra saplings and stuff to get dirt. I think I already have a dirt block on me. I do not. Okay, we'll just steal this one since there's some cooking there. You can compost in your barrels. You can compost, um, I better eat something, like now. <laughs> you can compost saplings, string, your extra silkworms, like so. Spider eyes, rotten flesh, fruit of any kind, fish, chicken. Basically, if you can eat it, you can compost it. Uh, leaf blocks, once you get two iron, just go on a leaf shearing bender and just cram all the leaf blocks you can into barrels. You'll get so much dirt that way. That'll come in handy when you're building your passive mob farm, and I'll get to that shortly. So how do you get cobblestone? You throw dirt in a sifter like so, or a sieve, and right-click it until you get these four little rocks. Put them together. You can also throw these things, I noticed, and that will give you cobble. Now, the first six cobble you get, you're going to want to turn them into slabs and make a slab furnace, like so. Sl sl no, I don't think so. Slab furnace. Works just like a regular furnace, except instead of eight cobble, it only takes six cobble. You will have two slabs left over, and it will be infuriating. Another quest that you're going to go on early on is going to be to make string, and you'll also have to make a fishing rod. Now you're provided with this little pond here, which is just big enough. It's kind of hard to find the sweet spot sometimes, but it's just big enough that you can catch fish out of it. You are going to be doing a lot of fishing in the early days. There we go. There we go. I'm just going to have some sashimi here. Yeah, of course, hunger overhaul is a thing, so you're not going to get a whole lot of hunger restored. So this is a pretty early thing here. Again, here's the strong box you get. It's got some bone meal in it. It's got all your books in it. It has a birch sapling, an oak sapling, and a spruce sapling. All the rest of this stuff is stuff that I put in here. I think it has a rain muffler in it too, which, you know, for all the good that does, other than to just not annoy you. So, why don't we go to my regular Let's Play world, and I will show you some things that you can do once you're a little farther along. I'll meet you there. Okay, here we are. This is much better. Now, as you can see by the uh, clucking behind me, I do have chickens. Eventually, you will... Let me get my hotbar back. You will need to make chicken eggs. Chicken spawn eggs. Yes, you can make chicken spawn eggs. And I've got a bunch of fruit and stuff I need to put away here. Uh, the pumpkin is for my protection. That's in case uh, an ender bro shows up. I'm going to put the seed away. Put that seed away. Okay, I'm going to keep this on me for now. Okay, there is a quest at one point where you will make a chicken spawn egg, like so. Nine arrows. Now, where you get the arrows from if you don't have the feathers? Welp. That's how. Now, that <laughs> that is my um, Mark II mob farm. I'm just gonna... There we go. Alright, make eggs. So... There, you can see the base here, and if you've been watching the series, um, this is where this is the mob farm that you know and, and loathe. <laughs> you love to hate. So I, I use that... Whoa, hello, there's an enderman. I use that as the base for this monstrosity here. It's got some water inside that directs the mobs through channels. Down the shaft, it drops them onto the hopper. It does not kill them outright. But it does tenderize them for me. So all I have to do is give them one good whack with this sword. They, they stand on a hopper, so all of their bits fall into it, unless I have magnet mode on, which I, I'm not supposed to do. Okay. Oh, crap. Okay, yeah, there's an Enderman in there. I'm gonna... Okay, yeah. So yeah, once you get that, you're gonna have bones coming out the wazoo. I'm gonna take those back with me, because we can make some food with those. I am a bit hungry. Do I have any, uh, I have some pork chops on me. Oh yeah, pork chops. So, where do pigs come from? Well, there are two ways that you can get pigs. You can either build a passive mob farm, which is as simple as... Hey buddy. Which is as simple as getting some dirt, putting it on the ground, 
and planting some grass seeds on it. How do you get grass seeds? By sifting dirt in the sieve over there. And also, once you get some grass, now the, the quest book tells you that the passive mob farm needs to be a 6x6. Six six. Well, there were passive mobs spawning on this when it was only about to here, and it's only four blocks wide, so there's some wiggle room there. I, I've had everything but a cow spawn over here. I've had a cow spawn over at the other one there, which is where the pigs and stuff live now. Anyway, even if you don't have passive mobs spawning, you can take some bone meal, you can throw it at the ground. Oh, star fruit. Yeah, I've already got plenty of that. And you will get tall grass. This is where you will get your wheat seeds. This is also where you will get all your Pam's Harvest Craft seeds and also all these saplings. You'll get some of them as quest rewards. Once you start getting fruit saplings, and if you have a decent supply of bone meal, you'll be good, pretty good on food. Uh, you'll still need to watch out. But... Once you get all that, and once you get your furnaces made, the next three stone you get, you'll, you're going to want to bake them into smooth stone and make yourself a juicer, just like you would in Magic Farm. So you can take that juice or juicer and upgrade your fruit to unfulfilling snacks. Now, uh, in fact, I'm out of snowballs. I'm going to have to uh, build a snow platform, I guess, over there because that is a taiga biome, you can put your snowball here and upgrade these further to smoothies. Now how do you get things like iron and clay if you cannot mine for them? Well, clay is easy. You just take your hammer, and this is going to be another quest item here. I'll go to my cobble generator. Yeah, if um, the first cobble generator you're going to see me make in the Agrarian Skies series, it's, it's pretty painful, honestly. Um, so much so that I had felt compelled to actually splice in a few seconds of me explaining this thing. This is actually built out of congealed slime blocks from the slimy sapling, slimy trees over there. I needed a material that was plentiful and f not flammable. So, whoops, every once in a while you lose one, but that's okay. So, you take your gravel, which is what you get from beating cobble with a hammer. How, why are you up there? Come here. Hup, there we go. You put that gravel on the ground, you beat it with a hammer, it turns into sand. And I'm going to have to beat the rest of it because I'm out of room. <laughs> there we go. Once it turns into sand, you beat on it again, and it turns into dust. Now what do you do? Now these look like the compost barrels, and they actually are just like the compost barrels. If you leave them out in the open like this, where they can see the sky, rain will fall into them, provided you are in a biome where rain falls. And just make sure to F3, because uh, right around here is a desert. And then over there is taiga again, so you're going to get snow instead of rain. But once you get a bucket, you can also, if it hasn't rained in a while, go to your water source and just... Is there something? No, that, that's a cobble. Okay. So to make clay, you just put those in there. They soak up the water, put the dust in there. You get clay blocks, which you can then just throw on the ground and break normally. And then you get clay, which you can use to make your bakeware, your grout for your smeltery, all that good stuff. So, I've got, you see, I've got uh, my noob farm going here. I'm actually, this is another one of those useless things you got out of a, out of a, ch out of a uh, reward bag. That's another boat with feather falling on it. So, you can also, um, there are also some other spawn eggs that you can make. You can make sheep eggs. You'll need a lot of wool for that. So you will need, let's see, 30 some odd string, 32 string to make yourself eight wool and an egg. So you'll have to have chickens first. Pigs, you'll need pink wool. So you'll need some way to dye that wool pink, which um, if you can, uh, if you get flowers from bone meal in the ground, that's about the only way you're gonna be able to do it easily. Another way that you can get your passive mobs, sometimes the quest rewards will include those lovely, lovely... Hello. Let's see if I can find one. Ah, yes. Those lovely 
Excuse me. It is a mystery safari nets. Oh, and you get um, flowers and stuff too. Did I keep those flowers? I'm not sure I did. <laughs> oh boy. But you, you get those uh, little safari nets and most of the time they'll have a passive mob in them. But do open them in a safe place just in case. So, I think that about covers it. Um, again, a oh, little, uh, little thing on the cookware here. Back in the day in Magic Farm, uh, my suggestion to you was, was with your first iron, of course, make a bucket. After that, make a cutting board. Because then you would be able to make zombie jerky. You no longer need the cutting board to make the zombie jerky. That is the good news. The bad news is you need salt. You are not going to find salt in the sky. What you're going to have to do, you're going to have to get four iron and make a pot. Then you will get a bucket of water. Let's go ahead and turn that into some fresh waters. You'll have to boil that water in a pot to get salt. So, instead of the cutting board, make the pot. Save up the iron, save up the four iron. Make the pot first. So that will give you some of your delicious, nutritious people jerky. If you're not composting your rotten flesh. Then after that, I would go with the skillet and the saucepan and the cutting board. Another really good early food, once you get a hold of eggs, you're going to be able to make mayo. You're also going to be able to make boiled eggs once you get a pot. Now, how, do, how are these going to help you out? You get that boiled egg, that mayo, a mixing bowl, and your cutting board. That will give you egg salad. Egg salad is a good early meal. It'll use up some of those eggs that you're not humming back into the chicken pen. I'm gonna just cram that in my face here. Whoops. <laughs> Opened up the chicken airlock there. So your smoothies, your egg salad, um, it, you can get fruit salad. I believe it is the mixing bowl and the cutting board and pretty much any two fruit. Yeah. There's another light meal. So once you get some fruit saplings going, that will allow you to do that. So yeah, your priority is going to be get yourself a grassy area where you can throw the bone meal on the ground and get the fruit saplings. After that, you'll be set for a while until you get your smeltery up, at which point you can finally make your mattock and you can make a decent farm like a civilized human being, which this is not yet, not quite yet. It's getting there. So that is our brief look at how not to starve to death in agrarian skies. I hope you found it informative, and of course I will be playing much more of this. Oh yeah, it's raining, my barrels are going to fill up. So, if there is a mod pack you would like to see me do, or a certain food mod that you haven't seen in a mod pack and you would like to see me do a little, uh, little thing on, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do for you. Today is my birthday, by the way. So <laughs> Happy birthday to me. I was gonna try I was trying to get five hundred subscribers by my birthday. It didn't happen, but that's okay. I, I still love each and every one of you. And it is still a joy to me to get to do these videos for you every day, every week. And hopefully I'll get my schedule back to normal soon to where we can get back to doing the things that we love again. I see you up there, creepers. And one more little thing. I have gotten my table. I will be at the Houston Con August 8th through the 10th in the dealer's room. I will have paper craft Sarah's that you can come and pick up. So if you are in the area, come say hi. Come chat with me. 
I may be sharing my table with a friend of mine that does comics. I'm not sure at this point. We'll, we'll find out. But anywho, I will see you next week, folks, hopefully, once we uh, get busy season over with. Bon appetit, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.